While your first year out as an attending will be one of the most challenging, rewarding, and formative of your emergency medicine career, everyone's experience is a bit different. With that in mind, we've compiled a top 10 things I wish I would have known about the first year out of residency. Number one, be financially responsible. While you may feel like you're rolling in Benjamin's, heavy spending hurts you later on. Get a financial planner, save for retirement, live at your spending for a few years. With that in mind, pay off high interest credit cards before splurging on new purchases. Consider the wealthy doc in the smaller house with a used car. An EM physician with three years experience makes about 235K, or almost $20,000 a month. After taxes, this might drop to 13.5K a month. Monthly costs of mortgage, insurance, loan payments can quickly eat up that extra cash. Physicians are infamously bad investors. A financial advisor can help you out. The panel suggested new graduates stick to the budget they had as a resident for the first couple of years out. Number two, patient satisfaction is critically important. Patient satisfaction scores can translate into dollars for you, bonuses for your medical director, and ultimately the group's contract with the hospital and your job. It's unlikely you're prepared for this one. Most residency programs shelter you from patient satisfaction surveys. Residents typically don't collect many of them, and unless you are a major offender, your program director will probably let it slide. There are several companies that deal with patient satisfaction surveys. The largest is Press Ganey, which contracts with over 40% of hospitals. These surveys are randomly mailed to discharged patients. Questions include courtesy of the doctor, degree to which the doctor took the time to listen to you, doctor's concern to keep you informed about your treatment, doctor's concern for your comfort. The good thing is that the bar on patient satisfaction is still pretty low. Always introduce yourself and shake everyone's hand in the room, said one new attending. Be realistic. Don't tell them the nurse will be right in. Explain the treatment plan. Sit down and show a little empathy. Consider asking the patient and family if they have any concerns that they'd like you to address. This empowers them in the treatment plan. You might just enjoy your job a bit more and you'll have to spend less time in your medical director's office. Number three, the pace is faster, but you can handle it. AAEM and SAEM propose that staffing levels should not exceed two and a half patients per position per hour. Even if you're a fast resident who goes to a slow ED, you're going to have to manage more patients per shift than you're currently seeing. This wasn't much of a problem for the physicians I queried, though. They say it was a little challenging knowing that you're the one ultimately responsible for making sure the department flows. If there's a backup at triage, it's your responsibility to dig the place out. But there are multiple time savers when you get out. First, you no longer have to present your patients, which can save a considerable amount of time. Second, particularly at community EDs, the department is only as fast as you are, and most of your staff are going to go out of their way to make sure you are efficient. Number four, you're the attending now. Play the part. There's a way to do this confidently without coming across as cocky. As the attending, everyone will look to you for leadership and guidance. If you're having a bad day or in a bad mood, it's going to trickle down to the nurses, staff, and any residents or students, and will likely permeate the rest of the shift. Alternatively, if you're enthusiastic, proactive, and pleasant, your attitude will be infectious. There are certain attendings you enjoyed working with more than others in residency. They may or may not be good teachers, but they are definitely great mole models who take that well-adjusted, low-stress approach to the ED. Model your behavior after them. Number five, you will make mistakes. We all do. You have entered a complex, high-stress, high-stakes field where patients' histories may be unreliable. I doubt there are many seasoned EM physicians who haven't missed a patient with appendicitis, had a central line complication, or experienced some degree of confrontation with a consultant. But be resistant. Have contrition. Above all, resist flogging yourself with the retrospectoscope. Find an outlet via a mentor or peer where you can talk openly about your mishaps, acquire some wisdom from them, and then move on. Number six, you are going to have a little more free time. This is true. Nothing is more taxing on your time than residency. The average academic faculty member worked 22 clinical hours per week in 2004. Factor in non-clinical hours around 21 and you have up to 43 hours per week. Some of that time is spent at home, however, so it's not as onerous as it looks. Community EM docs work on average 32 to 36 hours per week. That's a lot less than the 48 to 60 hours per week most residents work. But there's a catch. With committees, research, activities, extra shifts, etc., you can end up working more than residency. I personally don't recommend the latter. You don't want to burn out, and you need to see your family. Being involved with non-clinical aspects of emergency medicine, however, can make your professional life more satisfying. Number seven, don't ask for a lot from your group the first year out. 
Your first year out can be challenging for your partners and fellow faculty. You may be slower than them. You may need to study for boards. You want to be viewed as a team player. Show up early for your shifts. Leave late if necessary. Don't sign out trivial things that you can dispo. And by all means, help your partners out. Taking that weekend shift now for your partner who wants to attend their son's soccer game is not only the right thing to do, but fosters goodwill that will be paid back to you. Your first year of work should be focused on developing a reputation as hardworking and flexible. Number eight, nurses can make or break you. Make an effort to get to know your nurses. The first month, I used to keep a list and write their names down on it. You don't have to be everyone's best friend, but you do have to be professional and courteous, even to the most personality-challenged staff you come across. Always listen to your nurses and respond to their concerns. Praise publicly and criticize privately. Number nine, go with the flow. Every ED has embedded dysfunctional behaviors and mechanisms that will drive you nuts. Most of these EDs actually do a good job of taking care of patients, though, and that's what you should focus on. Know the difference between unsafe environment versus a nuisance that doesn't really affect overall care. Try to understand that there are different practice patterns across the country. Just because you always gave a certain medicine in residency doesn't make that treatment evidence-based or a global standard of care. And don't ever say, when I was at Hospital X, this is how we did it. They may try to send you back. Number 10. Be nice to your family. They haven't seen a whole lot of you these past three or four years, and they miss you. You probably miss them too. Considering their sacrifices, your family is likely as excited as you are to be finished with your residency. Treat your spouse or significant other to a long weekend away. Remember to take time for special events and also to take care of yourself. Practicing emergency medicine is a stressful job, and managing to keep some semblance of normal family social life can rejuvenate and recharge even the most cynical emergency physician's batteries. The first year of any job is usually the hardest. By keeping in mind these simple ideas and suggestions, you can minimize the stress of this important year in your career. With a little determination, an open mind, and a strong sense of life's priorities, you'll be off and running on the first leg of your journey as an emergency physician.